Okay, I should have known better. Make a video with a black box in it. <laughs> and people were bound to ask, what's in the box, Mike? <laughs> so, if you watch the video, uh, this is going to be uploaded because I'm going to upload this video, try to get it uploaded here um, tonight. Uh, it takes forever because i got such blasted slow internet connection, but um, I did a video just explaining really quick why you know, a lot of people think the noise blanker is broken in their radios when it isn't. Um, it's because the noise blanker only works with fast rise time impulse type noises. That's what it's meant for. You're not going to notice a difference on static background type noise, the hiss, the sizzling bacon. It's meant for those really fast rise times. So, peep, I, like I say, I should have known people were going to know, well, what circuit? Can I make one? You know, where do I get the parts? Yada, yada, yada. That, all that. So, this is basically the same thing. I didn't even bother opening this up to tell you the truth. I just kind of, I knew I had used a 4093 and just went from there. So, this is the schematic. That's all you need. It's really simple. Just take a friend, the 40, the CD, and you can get this in various different manufacturers, but like I say, it's just basically just a 4093, which is a, a CMOS IC. It's a quad two input NAND Schmidt trigger, so it has four two input NAND Schmidt triggers inside. So we're just taking the two inputs here, okay, they're tied together on the first the first one. That goes through this one meg variable resistor here. Now, in this one, this circuit that I have down here on the proto board, unlike this little box, I made this one more variable. Um, this one I just have a toggle switch, okay. This toggle switch has two resistors on it, depending on you know, one resistor in this position or a different resistor in this position. This potentiometer right here replaces that toggle switch. So it, this schematic is variable. You can adjust the duration or how fast the pulses occur with this variable resistor here. If you just want to put a toggle switch and have one, or you don't even need a toggle switch, you just want to set it for one speed, find your happy speed, you can just play around with a VR, find, then measure its resistance when you get it to, yep, that sounds good to me, and then just measure the resistance wherever that, that VR has landed, and you could stick a fixed resistor in. But like I say, I figure I'd throw a VR in this one, but yeah, if you want to stick a toggle switch with just two positions for two different speeds, um, you don't have to use the VR, you can use fixed fixed resistors with a toggle switch or just a single resistor. Um, there is a 0.1 microfarad cap here, that's just a poly dip cap. Um, this is a poly dip cap over here, this is a 0.01 microfarad. Uh, there are two diodes in this. They're just common 1N4148 small signal diodes. One on the battery input and one on the output line here. There is a 1 microfarad filter cap on the supply line here. Do we really need it? Eh, probably not. Because honestly, this circuit's designed to make noise. So if any noise feeds back into it, eh, it's just going to make more noise. <laughs> but just always good practice. Stick a filter cap on your supply line. Um, so anyhow, you have the two inputs here tied to this circuit. This is the output on this side. Pin 3 would be the output of the first two input quad Schmidt trigger, or two input NAND Schmidt triggers. It's a mouthful what this IC is. And then that output is tied to the input of the second, which is pin 5 and 6, the third, which is pin 8 and 9, and the fourth, which is pin 12 and 13. So that's the second, third, and fourth two input NAND Schmidt trigger inputs. So you have all the other the other three that are inside of this IC, the inputs are all tied together and tied to the output of the first one. And then you have the outputs from the second, third, and fourth two input NAND Schmidt triggers, again, are all tied together, and that's your output. It's just that simple. Goes through a cap, blocks the DC capacitor here to help help slightly rectify that because at this point it's going to be basically a very nasty square wave <laughs> um, goes through this uh, diode and then this VR here just sets the output level and you can play around with these values if you don't have a hundred K use whatever you happen to have laying around values in this circuit again not critical um, you're going to want to try to keep around very high resistance for this this whatever you use variable resistor or fixed resistor it doesn't really matter but it's going to be, it's probably safe to say you're going to want something above at least 270K. 
um, if you're using a fixed resistor anything up to one meg or possibly even 1.5 depending you know how fast or slow you want the speeds to go and like i say you can play around with that if you've got a junk parts box with a bunch of old resistors or a vr just play around with it um, same thing with the cap you can play around even with that cap value a little bit um, so here is the output on the oscilloscope over here so i have and yeah don't pay attention to any of this other crap on this board just a bunch of other projects um, that I see that's hiding down under there, that's the 4093 under there. Here's our speed adjustment, and there's our output trimmer. Now you can use just normal potentiometers, like you know, a volume control out of an old radio, that style, doesn't matter. The small signal level, so you don't need to be using big quarter or half watt VRs. Um, if you just have trimmer resistors, they'll work just fine. Um, there's our filter cap and diode, our other diode, are two poly dip and for these you could use poly dips ceramic again whatever you happen to have laying around <laughs> um, and that's pretty much it comes out to that VR which is our output level so I have the scope hooked up to the output this side's the ground this side goes to the output from the capacitor that goes to the diode into the VR and then out and that's what we see on the scope right there now if I adjust the trimmer that was closest to me, which is the speed, which is going to affect how f frequently, if I get my little tool lined up with a slot on this thing, so you can see they're getting closer together, closer together, and it gets to the point where it's basically a solid bar. And if I unscrew the other direction, you see we can increase the time between the pulses. And remember these little these little trimmers are ten turns, so it takes me a while. I'm spending okay. And there, I've reached the end of this one one meg trimmer. And between positive pulses, we're at twenty milliseconds per division. So we got approximately you know what twenty, forty, sixty, about yeah eighty pulses per second or per uh, millisecond there, and probably usable going to be somewhere like around here to something more like that and then we can see the fast rise time if we just stop it and we'll zoom in on a pulse and see what that positive pulse looks like we'll take a look at the rising edge keep sliding the position back over here So right now we're at 5 microseconds per division, so you can see the duration of the entire pulse is about 5 microseconds. And actually reached the band li bandwidth limit of the scope right there. We're at 200 nanoseconds per division, and you can see the rise time is probably, what, 5? maybe five nanoseconds so an extremely fast rise time on that and then like I say it collapses back down and about there were five microseconds per division so it goes up and back down in about five microseconds worth of time so really really fast rise time and a fairly fast decay rate there so let's uh, hook that up to the radio over here and uh, we'll actually see exactly what that sounds like so I just have a adapter to a BNC cable, which is right here. We'll take this cable to the output and the ground. And then just zoom out here. Turn the volume up. And then you can see a little trimmer adjuster back on here. Now, people had asked, actually, one, one, maybe two people had asked in the previous video about why is there so much background noise? Well, we're not hooked up to an antenna. We're, I've just got it hooked up to a 50-ohm cable here, but it just comes out to wires. And now you've got all of this, pardon my French, crap here. This is an antenna. This is just picking up all the noise and crap in the background so yeah that's why there's a lot of sh noise there because actually 
see that a lot of that background noise goes away when I disconnect it. Well, we can speed that back up. And I just slipped off. But, big thing is, when we turn the noise blanker on, it's gone. And you'll see that happens no matter how, what speed we set it at. Okay. It's just as effective, because it's not so much looking for the spacing between the pulses. It's looking for that really fast rise time pulse. That's what the noise blanker circuit is designed to block out. The, how frequently those pulses happen really isn't as, isn't, isn't as important. So, that's basically what's in the box. If you want to make one of what's in the box, get a box and put that in it. <laughs> and that's what you'll have. So, um, and like I say, you get these little project boxes. You can get these things from DigiKey, Mauser, I think this one's Twin... Oh, God. I could go get, I've actually got a whole... I think i got like 40 or 50 of them. out here and get one off the shelf. <laughs> they are yeah, from DigiKey. Uh, you can't really read the number. Probably in the camera. I'll read it to you. It's a 438 so 438-1160-ND. So that's 438-1160-ND. That's the actual DigiKey part number. And it's Twin Industries. But you can see it's a project box, but it comes with a pre-fitted little circuit board. And that's all that's inside of this. I've been using these things for years. And then, like I say, these little battery boxes, you can pick these things. Just look up on eBay. That's, I think, where I got, I got like 50 of them two years ago. These little 9-volt battery holder boxes here. It's just a 9-volt battery holder with a built-in on-off switch. And like I said, I just glued this box to the lid of this box then. Still left access to the screws in case I ever need to get in here. But, um, so that's all you need, folks. An IC. <laughs> and honestly, you don't even need a box. You could just throw this circuit on a circuit board and be perfectly... It would work just fine. Um, like I say, if you put it in a project box, it's a little more convenient to use. You stick a BNC jack on there. Or you could just, um, if you don't even want to use a BNC jack, you could just run a piece of coax cable in there with a PL259 connector. Then you could just run that cable and hook it up to the back of the radio. Just remember, don't transmit into this. <laughs> this is not a 50 ohm load. If you transmit into this, you're going to smoke the little box. Now, granted, you're not going to smoke much. It's not like you're going to, you know, if you burn out every part in this box, you're out a couple cents. <laughs> now, the radio, on the other hand, you don't want to go burning finals out. But, yeah, make sure you don't have a micro. Probably the best thing to do is, just like I have here, I do not have a microphone plugged into the radio. Because, remember, this radio, like a lot, not all, but a lot of radios, unless you have a microphone plugged into the radio, you have no sound. But, so instead of plugging a mic in, I've just got a little, it's just an old mic jack with the, the pin, the receive pin, and the ground pin tied together with a piece of heat shrink tubing on it. But that allows me, that way I can plug that into a radio, shorts the receive pin out, which connects the speaker, so we can hear. So, that's all you need. Um, IC, two diodes, three caps, two VRs. You're in business. 9-volt battery, and box is optional, um, but, but, well, a 9-volt battery snap connector. You know, worst case scenario, if you don't even have one of those and you're really on a tight budget, hell, I've seen people solder wires to the batteries. <laughs> Whatever works. You don't need to get fancy with this. 